गोपी जाना बाला गिरिवाग धोगी यशोद नंदना बजा जनगण जना यशोद नंदना भजा जनगण जना जमुना चीगा बना चावी जमुना चीगा बना चावी जाया गाधा माधवा Kunjabi Havi Jaya Gadha Madhava Kunjabi Havi Gopi Jana Valaba Giri Vagdhavi Gopi Jana Valaba Giri Vagdhavi Yashoda Nandana Baja Jana Ganjana Yashoda Nandana Baja Jana Ganjana Jamuna Tiga Bhana Chagi Jamuna Tiga Vanachari Ajaya Gada Madhava Kunjabi Havi Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Jaya Krishna Balagam, Krishna Balagam, Krishna Balagam, Jaya Krishna Balagam, Balagam, Krishna Balagam. Jaya ni mai ni tai, ni mai ni tai, ni mai ni tai, Jaya ni mai ni tai, ni mai ni tai. Jaya Jaya Babu Pa Babu Pa Babu Pa Jaya Jaya Babu Pa Babu Pa Babu Pa Nitai Goga Ribo La Ribo Haribo Lo Goga Ribo Haribo La Ribo Nitai go hari bol, hari bol, hari bol, go hari bol, hari bol. Jai ni chalela pavishnam vishnu pad paramamsa paribhaja kacharya. So sata shi shi madhi se vayenge se si bhakti vedanta swami. Shlupo pad ki. Kanta Shrimad Bhagavatam ki. Shri Prabhupada's Transcendental Book Marathon ki. Shri Prabhupada's Transcendental Book Distribution ki. Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Yaga ki. Shri Hari Krishna Maha Mantra ki. Go Vipamanande. All glorious assembled devotees. All glorious the assembled devotees. All glorious assembled devotees. All glorious, all glorious to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 9, Chapter 10, entitled The Pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, and we're reading text 28. Krita, Esha, Vidhava, Lanka, Vayamcha, Kulanandana, Deha, Krita, Gridranam, Atma, Nagaka hitave, 
Kitaisha Vidhavalanka Vayam Chakulanandana Deha Kito Ninam Gidranam Deha Kito Nam Gidranam Atmanaga Kahitave Kitaisha Vidhavalanka Vayam Chakulanandana Dehakito nam gi dranam Atmanaga kahitave Mothers, Kitaisha Vidava Lanka Vayam Chakulanandana Atmanaga Anyone else? Kitaisha Vidava Lanka Kita, made by you. Esha, all of this. Vidava, without a protector. Lanka, the state of Lanka. Vayamcha, and us. Kulanandana, O pleasure of the Rakshashas. Who's that? Deha, the body. Kita, made by you. Anam, eatable. Gidranam, of the vultures. Atma, and your soul. Naraka hitave, for going to hell. Translation, O pleasure of the Gakshasha dynasty. Because of you, the state of Lanka, and also we, that's his wife speaking, we ourselves now have no protector. By your deeds, you have made your body fit to be eaten by vultures, and your soul fit to go to hell. Responsively, O pleasure of the Gakshasha dynasty. Because of you, the state of Lanka, and also we ourselves now have no protector. By your deeds, you have made your body fit to be eaten by vultures and your soul fit to go to hell. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shlubhupadiki. 
one who follows the path of Ravana is condemned in two ways. His body is fit to be eaten by dogs and vultures, and the soul goes to hell. As stated by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita 16.19, Tanaham dvishata kuram samsareshu naradhanam shipam yashram ashubham asuresva yonishu. Those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among mankind, among men, are cast by me into the ocean of material existence, into various demoniac species of life. Thus, the destination of godless atheists such as Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, Kamsa, Dantavaka is a hellish condition of life. Mandodari, the wife of Ravana, could understand all this because she was a chaste woman. Although lamenting for the death of her husband, she knew what would happen to his body and soul, for although one cannot see directly with one's material eyes, sorry, one can see with eyes, there's a stamp in the book, it's just stamped in the book. <laughs> One can see with eyes of knowledge, Pashyanti Jnana Chakshusha. In Vedic history, there are many instances of how one becomes godless and is condemned by the laws of nature. Kitasha Vidhava Lanka Vayamcha Kulanandana Dehakrito Ninam Ridhanam Atmanagaka Hetave. O pleasure of the Gakshasha dynasty, because of you, the state of Lanka, and also we ourselves now have no protector. By your deeds, you have made your body fit to be eaten by vultures and your soul fit to go to hell. Amagyana tiamanda sya gyananjala shalakaya chakshu umilitam jena tasme shi goa vinamaha shi chaitanya no bishtam shtapitam jena butale swayam rupa kadamayam tatati swapadantikam shi krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shi adwaita gadhadha shiva siddhi go bhakta vinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare vanchaka patarubhyacha kipa sinyo bhyayvacha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo nama nama om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pachate Teshtarine So it's what we do that defines us. Our actions will define our future and it will define us. And she's saying here, and she doesn't mince her words, because of you, the state of Lanka, and we ourselves have no protector, and by your deeds, you have made your body fit to be eaten by vultures and your soul fit to go to hell. So he's saying it's your fault. It's no one else's fault. Because of your action, you defined yourself and you created your future. Like for example, sometimes we're thinking, I want to chant really good japa in the morning. But it's not these two hours that will define our japa time. It's everything that came before. The day before, the way we deal with devotees, if we committed any offenses. If we, uh, if we didn't follow the principles properly, the principle of devotional service, all this affects the consciousness, so then when it's time to sit down, we can't sit down. Even though we say, I'm going to dedicate these two hours to chant, but because of what happened before, the way I developed my consciousness, then I'm affected at that time. So it's really what we do, the actions that we do, that will define what we become. And what we do is based on consciousness, and consciousness is based on desires. So if we have material desires, the consciousness will be uh, material. And if the consciousness is material, obviously we'll be acting on it. Many times we think that um, I can just have a bad consciousness and nothing will happen. But the consciousness, although in this age it says that mental offenses don't have effect, only uh, physical offenses. But before, mental offenses had effect. Huh? Like Shingi made an offense. But when, when someone has a certain type of consciousness, then naturally he will act in a certain way. Like for example, if you study for an exam, but you don't study well, and you fail, what was the use of all these studies? It means you didn't do it properly. So it's basically what we do, the activities that we do, 
that will define where would, what we're going to do and how we're going to act and how, what we're going to achieve. And it's not that Ravana did not do, know what he was doing, that he was just unconscious. I mean, Marici told him when he was trying, he was telling Marici he wanted to try to get Sita. Marici told him about Ram. He told him about Sita. His wife told him. His brother told him. He knew the Vedas also. I mean, these are the, demi the uh, demons, uh, the half-brothers of the demigods. They have the same father. So it's not that these demons were like ugly and stupid and uh, no knowledge, you know, like we depict the demons. They were very, very elevated living entities. But they took a decision, and that decision was that I will not serve Krishna. I don't like that person. Hiranyaksha openly said that Krishna is his, uh, that Vishnu is his enemy. That's why he wanted, he was so envious of Vishnu, even though he knows the position of Vishnu, but he couldn't actually understand or realize his position because of his envy. And he was so angry because Yaganyaksha was killed by Lord Vishnu, but he didn't think what Yaganyaksha had done. He had done so many things, therefore Vishnu killed him. No, he's just, it's like people go to war, and then they kill people, and then if the opposite camp kills one of them, they're thinking, okay, now that's the real war. But they attacked. So Iran Yaksha is the one who did bad things. But Iran Kashipu is not thinking like this. He's thinking my brother got killed. So it's his envy against the Lord. And so it's, not a, it's a conscious decision that Ravana did to steal Sita. He consciously wanted to enjoy the Lord's potency and he did not want to surrender to, uh, to the Lord. It's a decision that he makes. Like for example, one day I came back home, I had a black eye. So my mother didn't have to ask me what I did. She knew exactly. So similarly, when we come in front of the deities with the body, he knows, Krishna knows, you cheated me. It's obvious because therefore we have a body. Like in America, and I'm sure around the world, in penitentiaries or in prisons, you have a certain outfit. In America, it's orange because if they escape, you can see the color. It's very visible. So this is our penitentiary or our prisoner's outfit. So that means that we've cheated. But it's not an unconscious decision when we do these things. Like you go on a plane, what should I eat? Should I eat veg? Should I eat non-veg? Should I eat this? Should I offer? Should I not offer? When we go outside, when I walk on the street, what am I going to do with my mind? Am I going to start looking at people? What am I going to chant? Am I going to be Krishna conscious? These are all decisions that we make at every second, at every second of our life. And these are these decisions that define what's going to happen to us. But these are conscious decisions. It's not that Ravana was unconscious. It's not that Iranyaksha was unconscious. He made a conscious decisions, and sometimes we may not understand fully the reaction. But ultimately, as we fully accepted the principle that we wanted to go against Krishna. So the reason why, at least myself, I'm not a pure devotee is because I'm still keeping something against Krishna. I'm still envious of Krishna. Like Arjuna, it says, was lusty on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So it's not that he was running after women, but he was lusty in the sense that he wanted to enjoy separate from Krishna. He did not want to do what Krishna wanted him to do. That's lust. And we still have this thing. Called, and it's the lust that makes us go against Krishna. Because we still, at the moment in the spiritual world, we started thinking, who is this person? I want to be like this person. It's immediate. We fell in the material world. But it was a conscious decision. My decision was, is I don't want to serve the Lord. I want to be the Lord. Like, you know, that story of the Brahmin boy holding a tree. And he's holding the tree and he's saying that the tree is holding me. And the friend says, just give up the tree. No, the tree is holding me. So we're holding to Maya saying, Maya is holding to me. He's, Maya is holding me. No, just give up holding the Maya and Maya will go. So actually, it's a conscious decision. It's not unconsciously that we're going through these different paths or these different reactions of our life. We took a conscious decision, and every day we continue taking decisions to be with the Lord or against the Lord. Every time we take a decision, and we're not decided to be, it's like people are thinking that I'm making a decision, I'm going to be independent. But the decision we're making is we're deciding who's going to control me. That's the decision. That's as far as we go. Krishna will control me or Maya will control me. That's the only decision. Like if, someone's fight, if someone does a, uh, a crime, he's thinking, I want to go against the government. Then he goes to jail. So he's taking his decision, is deciding, I want to be controlled by the government in the jail. Now, if he behaves properly, he's taking the decision, I want to be controlled by the government outside. 
But whatever it is, the control is there. But the living entity is thinking, I'm great, I'm taking a decision. Yeah, your decision is who do you want to be controlled with, by. And even as devotees, when we make decisions, are we going to be controlled by the external energy or the spiritual energy? Obviously, devotees are always protected by the Lord, and Krishna makes special arrangements with them. But still, through the material energy, Krishna will do different things. But ultimately, it is Krishna. And in that purport in the Bhagavad Gita of that verse 16:19, Prabhupada explained clearly that at the time of death, it is Krishna that makes the decision where these de demons are going to go. And he casts them in lower and lower and lower species of life so they don't come and bother him. He makes the decision. Ultimately, Krishna will make that decision. So whatever we do, ultimately, we will still be controlled. So even as devotees, even though we make vows and we want to make advancement and we're deciding, but the, what is stopping us is we still have this desire, we're still keeping somewhere in the heart some desire to be separate. Because if we didn't have that, we will be fully surrendered. But we're still thinking that I have some time. That's the real problem. The devotee is very thoughtful. Now what Maya does is she's trying to make us unconscious. Like governments where they do, is when they want to control people, they give them little you know, benefits and they don't want them to ask questions. They keep, in, they keep them in ignorance so they don't start thinking, what is this government doing? They don't want people to start thinking. So similarly, Maya does the same thing. She brings us in and she keeps us in. Now generally, if someone cheats you for many, many times, you generally don't want to see that person. But we've been seeing Maya for billions of years and we're still smiling at Maya. Krishna Prabhupada says in a class that Maya, Maya is kicking the materialist in his face and he's saying, give me more, give me more. It's one class. You heard that class? Give me more, give me more. So when the materialist or when the, the devotee is still staying in the material world, still thinking, I want a little more. So Maya, what she does is she keeps us. So she doesn't say, it's like someone gave you a post data check 10 times. He's saying, no, no, it's not my check. It's just the way you went to the bank and they didn't accept it. That's why they didn't pass it. So Maya is saying, yes, it's not me. It's just you didn't try the right thing. After one billion years, billions of years, you still didn't try the right thing. Try this way and it's going to work this time. I promise you. So Maya is always giving these promises and because we still have this desire to be separate from Krishna, we're still accepting what Maya is saying. But that she has only power because we still have this desire to be independent. We have this lust. So she's feeding on the lust. But if we can destroy the lust, then she won't have anywhere to feed. Like a man is controlled by his wife, but when the man becomes free from sex desires, he becomes detached. You know that's right in the sixth canto, Lord Brahma creates the world, do you remember? And he creates only man. And no one wanted to stay in the mature world. So then what does he do? From the best part of the man, he creates the woman and then no one wanted to leave. Because there was the attachment. They were saying this. So it's a conscious decision that we make, that we actually decide to make. But Maya, what she does is she's trying to make us unconscious so we don't, so we, and that's called impersonalism. It's like when, when they do apartheid or they try to kill people. You can't be conscious and kill someone. You have to, bl bl uh, you have to close your feelings. If someone kidnaps someone, they don't want to speak to them and start de develop a, developing a relationship, how you're doing, where you're from. They won't be able to kill them because there'll be a relationship. So Maya's trying to break that relationship with Krishna, is breaking the relationship with reality so that we won't be able to get out of her because we'll be impersonal. So Prabhupada came to destroy that impersonalism. It's just not the Mayavadis. It's the way we see things, the way we relate to the Lord, the way we relate to others. Like when we go on the altar, if someone tells you this is a person, Krishna is a person, no one has to tell you how to dress the deities. Because a person, that's how you dress. You put the pants, you put the shirt. But if you're not thinking it's a person, you think, how do you do it? No, you treat the Lord like a person and you dress him and you put nice tea like and you wash him like a personality. But what Maya does is she makes, she's trying to keep us unconscious so we don't think of these things. And therefore, after many years like me, after so many years of devotional service, I'm still sleeping. We're like uh, sleeping passengers. I'm doing my devotionals every day, every day, but I'm not asking too many questions. I'm not asking, like a businessman, he's thinking that 
Yesterday, I didn't make much money. What happened? Tomorrow, I want to make more money. So the devotee should always be asking, how is it that I didn't make much advancement? What kind of offenses did I do? How did I deal with the devotees? How did I approach my devotional service? Did I offer my prashad? Did I boga? Did I do things properly? He always should be analyzing like the businessman who wants to come to a point of, of, uh, to become very rich. And when he's very rich, he wants to become even more rich. But Maya, what she does is she, makes us, she puts us into sleep. So we don't ask questions. And when we don't ask questions, we just go on and go on and go on and we just... But the devotee is thoughtful. And one of the items is we think we have time. Every time I sl fall asleep in chanting, every time I don't come to class or I don't go to Mangalati or I'm not really listening to it, then I'm thinking, I have time. So what? I don't feel the urgency. Katwanga Maharaj, remember we're reading the story of Katwanga. So Katwanga, what happened? The demigod asked, what do you want? We, you, you, you fight so much well with the demons, we want to give you something. He says, how much time do I have left to live? Few minutes. Immediately he went down and he meditated on the Lord. Pariksit Maharaj didn't say, seven days. He didn't say, I'm going to go to Walt Disney or I'm going to go, you know, do the trip that I always wanted to do. I'm going to spend time with my wife, spend quality time with my kids. No, he said, what should I do? It's time to die. I'm going to die. What should I do? There's an emergency. There's a sense of urgency. And Prabhupada did state that his disciples, at that time he mentioned the Western disciples, they're not scared of Maya. And once he was praying and he was asking Krishna to protect him from Maya, and the devotees were so surprised. So there's, the sense of urgency is taken away by Maya. And every time that I don't practice my devotional service properly, I'm thinking I have time. I could die tomorrow, but I'm thinking no. But the real thing is we're doing overtime. Because we've been doing this for billions of years. But the illusion is it's going to be different. Huh? Prabhupada says when you enjoy, it's just like the man or the woman enjoy, it's just a diff it's the same thing but in a different container. Prabhupada says like that. So it's the same thing, but I'm thinking it's going to be new. And that's what Prahlad Maharaj is speaking about chewing the chewed. I take the, the cigarette butt, I'm thinking, or the sugar cane, and I'm thinking there must be something left. And that is the illusion that Maya puts us in, in a sleeping condition. And that's why the Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, sleeping soul, what are you doing? Get up, wake up, wake up. And you're sleeping on the lap of the witch Maya. She puts us to sleep. But ultimately it comes from a uh, conscious decision. In the same way that Ravana made a decision. He went, so he went against the Lord. And we are also taking a decision not to go fast in our devotional service. Because we still want to keep something on the side to enjoy. We don't want to give up yet. But it's not an unconscious decision. We have to become unconscious to do it, but we consciously do it. Do you understand the difference? We consciously decide that I don't want to surrender fully to Krishna, not right now. But to be able to accept that, you have to become unconscious. Because at the moment you understand Krishna's beauty, Krishna's grandeur, Krishna's incredible qualities, immediately you have to surrender. It's not possible. But what? We don't read the books many times. We don't listen to the classes properly. So we can't be conscious. Maya makes sure that we fall asleep. Maya makes sure that we don't read all every day. Mata makes sure that we don't chant our rounds properly. Because if we do, we're going to give up. We're going to give up on Maya because we'll become conscious. And then we'll say, yeah, how can I take Maya? Krishna is so beautiful and so attractive. Because we know you chant two hours steady rounds. My God, your consciousness is flying. We know that. Like when people, for the first time, they go to a temple, they feel so peaceful when they come out because their heart has been cleansed. So here, we see that um, she's telling, Mandurai is telling Ravana that everything you did is your fault. Obviously, he was liberated because he was killed by the Lord. But, and we know, the great devotees, but he's telling you that if you don't follow the Lord, if you take the wrong decision, you will be cast hell after hell. And then this verse is given on the Bhagavad Gita. And then what I did is I, I made a, a, um, a comparison with us in the sense that whatever we do ultimately, our activities, they will define us. What we do defines us and defines our future. 
And that ultimately, as Ravana made a conscious decision, we also make conscious decision. At every minute, we make a conscious decision. I can walk, I can look at the ladies, or I can think of Krishna, or I can chant. I, I can decide what I'm going to do. I can be in class, I can fall asleep, I can be attentive. These are all decisions that I make at every minute of my life. And this is what will define my consciousness at the time of death. Papa says we have to think of the Lord at the time of death, but it's not that easy if we, uh, we don't practice. He explains the same thing for dreams, that generally you dream what you do in the day. So if you're always on the altar and always serving the Lord and always chanting, there's um, Prabhupada gave an example that when he was a, uh, a student at Scottish College, he went to give his assignment to the teacher. There was a Scottish uh, teacher. And the teacher told them that if you want a higher, if you want a, mark, a, a certain mark, you have to go higher than what you're looking for. So, for example, if you just want to pass, you'll probably fail, but if you want 85, 90, you'll probably get 70 or 75. So what Prabhupada says, he says, to chant 16 good rounds, if you're just thinking, I'm going to chant 16 good rounds, you're probably not going to do 16 good rounds. But if you, want, if you chant all the time, then you're probably going to come and chant a certain amount of, you know, 16 good rounds. So ultimately, it is our decision. Where we are now is our decision. We have to, that's why every day we have to associate with devotees, we have to hear, we have to ask questions, we have to uh, try to see how we can make spiritual advancement. But ultimately, it's our decision, and what's going to happen at the time of death will be based on our decision. Saswar so Maharaj used to give a story I heard in one class. There was, in the Gurukul, there was a boy, I don't know if it's a true story, but in the Gurukul, this boy was always doing mischief. And he always got, he never got caught. Always someone else got caught. And then one day, he didn't do nothing. But someone else did something and then he got caught. <laughs> you know that story, Sebastian? <laughs> I heard it many years ago. So he got caught. So what it means is that ultimately what we do will come back to us. It's not that we can defy the Lord's energy or try to enjoy the Lord's energy. What he did was blunt. He stopped. He stole actually Sita. But when we try to enjoy separate from Krishna, we always also try to enjoy Sita. That means we're trying to enjoy separate than the Lord. So they, these verses can help us become conscious that this is how Ravana finished based on his decision. So how will I finish my Krishna consciousness? Obviously, we're already on the train. As long as we don't jump, we will get there. But how fast we get there will depend on how conscious we are in our devotional service and how we practice it. Hare Krishna. Is there any questions or comments? Yes. Mother Sukhara. In one sense, you know, Ravana, he was the greatest demon. Mm. But um, on the other hand, he was attained liberation because he was killed by Ram. So is there a backstory explaining how, how that came about? That's Jai and Vijay, no? Isn't Ravana Jai and Vijay? Yeah. Hiranyakashipu, Yanasha, Ravana, and Dantavaka. And then, uh, was it Shishupal? And uh, what is Ravana's brother? Oh, yeah, Kumbhakarna. Mm -hmm. So, because Krishna wants to enjoy. She knows that, but she's testing me. Mother Shushakada is a very senior devotee. <laughs> Mother Lakshmi Moni, any, uh, not questions, but comments? Any other questions or comments? Yes, Janmasami Prabhu. Can someone give the mic to Janmasami Prabhu? So we make, may, may make a decision to turn away from Krishna. But we understand that animals really don't have that they can't exercise free will. Um, but it, also in the human form, if someone becomes so covered, other on Atmika Shakti, his, his knowledge is so much covered, is he really choosing, you know, at that point? You know, that uh, isn't, isn't, aren't the modes of material nature just driving him? 
Yeah, he's dragging because of habits, but ultimately it's his choice. I mean, it's my understanding. Because obviously, ultimately, originally we made a choice. And what you're saying is because we're so covered by the modes, do we actually have a choice? No, you don't have a choice because we're so covered by the modes. But even though when scriptures are coming, even though the gurus are speaking, still we are following Maya. But we still have that choice. If we, it's like if we want to get out of a certain situation that's so painful, we can decide to go if we want. But we don't want to go. That was my point. That ultimately... Mm. We don't want to serve Krishna. We're still envious. Even as devotee, at least me, I still have this envy. And this envy is mass manifested through lust. I still want to enjoy. I want to have my little corner there. I want to make a show. Yeah, I'm a devotee. I'm advancing. I'm chanting my rounds. I'm doing good, giving classes. But at the same time, I'm keeping this little spot, this best spot for Maya. So that's my choice ultimately. Does it make sense? Yeah, once, once the knowledge is there, then we make choices. But... Before that, you know, and, I mean, originally, certainly, each duesha smutvena, you know, we're overcome by the dualities of desire and hate. But it does seem, you know, like humans are acting on the animal platform. Yeah. You know, they're... But at least as devotees, we have choice. Oh, no question about that. And now Krishna consciousness is so spread, you tell them about it and they decide we don't want to do it. It's like one man I met in the parking lot a long time ago and he, he had three out of experience, body experience. He had three heart attacks. So I said, what happened? He said, I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to leave. I, ha I had to come back. So that's his decision. So it's not that people don't know about God and people don't know about spiritual life. They don't want to know, hear about it. That's a decision. I mean, it's easy to tell poor kid. He'd, it's like in Toronto in 84, that's when Bhakti Maxwami took initiation, uh, sannyas, in October. And then this man said, my son one year died. So the answer was that, yeah, he's a child now, but he had so many lives. He's not that innocent. He looks innocent. Little baby, so innocent. But he's not innocent what he did in past life and what had happened to him. So ultimately, there is a choice. I know we're bound. But ultimately, if someone wants to get out of something, he has a choice. Is it, is it okay? Does it make sense? Or? No? Anything else? Do you think? I mean, is it a mistake? Yeah, mother. Us closer to the Adi car to come in touch with a spiritual master mm -hmm. or come in touch with knowledge and sometimes there's causeless mercy because I remember um, I was in <coughs> Buffalo in 1969 and <coughs> there was one devotee there who was telling Prabhupada um, he said Prabhupada do, do I have qualification this the fact that I'm in Krishna consciousness mean that I, ha I was a yogi in my last life, or I was, uh, Prabhupada said, some people come by accident. Mm. So, <laughs> but accident in this case meant Prabhupada's mercy. So sometimes we just come mm. by a gyata sakriti, but many times we work our way up, like just making the decision to go to bed early or to not go to a bar may not have anything directly in relation to Krishna consciousness, but it, it's a mode of goodness decision. So it brings us up and takes us a little bit closer mm. to the adhikar necessary to come in contact with Krishna consciousness. Actually, in the 12th chapter, Mother Sukha is teaching now the Bhakti Yoga chapters, but in one purport, when he says, if you can't do this, you do this, you can't do that, you do this. And one other purport, Prabhupada says, one who gives in charity, even not to devotees, but just to a uh, non-devotional, they, they will start the process of devotional service. Isn't it, Mother Sukhara? In the purport, he says that just by giving donation, even though it's not a spiritual donation, just giving a donation, he is starting to give. So he's starting, Prabhupada is so generous, he's starting the process of developing, of uh, advancement, spiritual advancement. So that's what you're saying in one sense. Anything else? Yes, Mother. You have a question? Sure. Can someone give her the mic? Please forgive me for this question. I don't uh, really know okay. if it is correct to ask this. But <clears throat> I would like to ask why um, we should be so afraid of death. 
maybe because I don't know that much scriptures and uh, Krishna um, sees our efforts right mm -hmm. and so he's so kind and merciful and um, if we don't uh, reach Krishna in this life so maybe we will yes. be born in the families of devotees is it correct? Yeah, the devotee is mm. not scared of death because he surrendered to Krishna. But your mentality is good. That uh, you're trying to do things properly and you have faith that Krishna will take care of you. But death is a painful process also. I think it's like 100 scorpions, whatever Prabhupada said, that bite, that sting you at the same time. And also the fear is to go into lower species of life. But if you practice devotional service, then ultimately Krishna will take care of you. But I'm not saying you should be scared. I'm saying that we, mo we have to become more and more conscious and more and more serious. We shouldn't slack like sleeping passengers, like, it's okay, I'm going every day. But what am I... Like me, I listen to Mangalati, but I don't hear the words. This is real. I mean, every day I'm trying to say, okay, today I'm going to listen. It's like I'm sleeping the whole time. I just wake up. You want to say something? <clears throat> Mother should... Oh. Um, like in Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu we study what is like pious activity giving in donation only to devotees but um, <clears throat> now you are saying just giving a little bit you are giving so I don't no no I'm just quote I was just quoting in the purport Prabhupada says and relating to Mother Lakshmi Moni statement that ultimately it is if you do Agatha Sukhi the unknown service even Krishna is so kind if you develop, because gradually by giving, what happens? You learn how to give. And gradually when you meet Krishna or devotees, you will have that tendency to give. So he's very, very broad, saying that by giving a little bit, by learning how to give, you're actually on the path. But actually it's, it's far, but it's still there. But yes, it's teaching us that you, we should actually know there's, there's um, charity and goodness, passion and ignorance, and depending who you give, there's different reactions. So these are two different things. Yeah, Mother Shukada. I was just going to say that death isn't always like a horrible experience. Like Narada Muni, when he left his body, Prabhupada explained it was like lightning and illumination. Uh -huh. Or someone uh -huh. like Didichi Muni, he was so Krishna conscious that, you know, when he gave in charity, you know, his yeah. body, it said when he left his, he didn't even know when he transferred from his material body to his spiritual body. Uh -huh. He didn't even know it. So there's that opportunity also that if you're Krishna conscious, may not be so such yeah, a horrible they experience say, yeah yeah they say that the devotee steps on the on the head of death that's what happened to Druva. he was using death as a stepping stone to go definitely but i think she was asking as devotees why we should be scared because we're advancing and krishna will take care of us and that's what you're saying also okay any other question or comments yes mother No, no. Can someone take the mic for a moment? I wrote it down. I, maybe it's a very simple question, but to me, it's not that simple. Um, <coughs> you were talking about the fact that we don't want to get rid of it. Actually, we don't want to get rid of Maya somehow, some way, maybe unconsciously. Could it be that we not really have, uh, we don't really have an idea about what is waiting for us there with God when we are liberated? Could it be that we know what, what to do, uh, what we do here? In any way, we know what we have here. There is darkness, there is some depression, yeah. there is sometimes unhappy time. But sure, you know, after the rain, called rain, the sunshine comes. So we grab that very strictly. Very slickly, we, we, know, we don't know. I really don't know what is waiting for me there. Yes, we're going to be with the Lord and save, uh, serve him day and night. But for the rest, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm talking only for but the me. Books, uh, it is can... very dull there and we know what we have here. But do we know what we will get oh, there? It's like when you want to travel, you go to the travel agency and they give you pamphlets. And you know the sunshine, and you know the beaches. So similarly, it's the same thing. We have the books, the Bhagavatam, and they're telling us actually what is the spiritual, what is clear description of the spiritual world. 
So we just have to read and then we will know. And here also by those who are realized, like when you hear from Prabhupada, Prabhupada gives clear descriptions. So the information is available. Yeah, because we don't know. But, but, but the thing I always is... think, oh my God, once I'm with God, it is day and night, uh, surfing Him, and maybe for many people it can sound very, very boring while... But the information is there, Mother. It is shining and sparkling. And but the information and is there. The in there so then read, in the Bhagavatam everything is described clearly. There's a clear description of the spiritual world. Do you want to say something, Mother Lux? Pakan, Prabhu, you want to say something? Okay, we should stop. Thank you. Shilupopad ki. Thank you very much.